செப்டம்பர் இருபத்தொன்று ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினஞ்சு அன்று பிரான்சில் ஆங்கிலத்தில் கொடுக்கப்பட்ட மாஸ்டர் மற்றும் சீடர்களுக்கிடையில் புத்தகதைகள் தி லே சீடர் அத்துலா நாளின் பகுதி I thought, oh, today is a day just to lay in bed, <laughs> eat something, snatch something or not, read a good book, yeah, put the feet up, do nothing. Yeah. Uh, there's some more room here. Come, come, come. English people, go to the front here. English speaking only. Yeah. Bill Roy, daddy. I don't have a lot of time, okay? I mean, my time is really knapp. <laughs> I say it in German. Knapp, yeah? How you say that? Knapp! How long have you been in India? You been there? I've never been no? to India. How do you know about the ghee? The clarify butter. <laughs> I had a friend who uh-huh. taught me. He was, he was vegan before I became vegan. Ah, okay. So he told you ghee is a no-no? Well, he, he was vegan except for ghee. That's the only exception. <laughs> How nice. No, well, it's good that you know. Okay, there's one more space here. Huh? Spacious. Uh, no? Ngồi đây. Xong rồi, người đó, người nào nói xịt vô. Yeah. Over here, over here. Took the camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Don't squeeze it. <laughs> Always be considerate, otherwise you go nowhere. You never go up anywhere. Never. Hmm? Am I a bad example so that you don't learn anything? No, no, huh? no, you learn a lot? Truly? What do you learn? What did you learn? Oh, master, I've become a much better person. <laughs> I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, slowly. I, I became a much better person. Are you sure? Yes, I okay. Am. Okay. Good. It's twenty seven years already. Twenty seven years? No, twenty twenty two. Twenty two years. Oh, that's a long time, man. I got in old. After twenty years you become a different person, that's <laughs> for sure. I became a different person. I have more wrinkle than before. <laughs> okay. Anybody else who learned something? What kind of better person are you? In every way. Like, for example, one way. Yeah. Impress me with one or two ways, you know. Uh, okay. Yes, um, always um, um, have inspiration from, um, from higher inspiration, no matter what you encountered in life. Always have the love and the power from Master. Um, I, I have one very deep things. When I grew up, I always feel my parents were harsh to me, and I couldn't get over when said. Even when I meditated, mm. um, years years in the night in a dream, I kind of like argue with them. But when we grew up, the culture, we don't argue with parents. We we never talk back to yeah, the parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like what culture big, is that? Chinese. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, so um, it's kind of like something deep inside. Mm. But year after year now, I feel that that one is gone. <laughs> and, uh, Karma? Yes, mm. it, it's disappeared. I feel love. I feel my parents gave me life. I really um, appreciated how they taught me to be independent and to be facing life. Yeah, it's good. Good. That's a good thing. Very big, big step. Yeah, big steps. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Master. <laughs> Anybody else? But the Buddha has been teaching you about karma long before I was born. Why didn't you follow him? Follow his teaching? Huh? You don't know about Buddhism? Yes, I know. Actually, I found the Master because at first I was um, searching for Buddhist um I read some Buddhist uh, scripture articles. I like it a lot. And yeah. uh, we're the Buddha always <laughs> say about karma. Karma is a specialization in Buddhism, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're better. Anyway. Hey. Yes. Come here. Thank you, Master. Special.
special guest. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> Come, you want to? Psh, psh. Mm -hmm. If you can, you want to? Okay, wow. He likes it here. <laughs> I'm so glad. You like it? Good. Every time I'm getting ready to come here, he's already jumped out waiting at the gate, waiting tail, wanted to come go to work. I said, let's go to work. And then he knows he's here. Here is work for me. How do you guess? <laughs> How do you know coming here is, is work? I'm always laughing, smiling. How come you think it's work? Ha <laughs> ha. Anybody else has improved yourself in life? I mean, in a practical way. I don't mean inner realization. Yeah. Because inner realization, not everybody can see, right? So practically, if you improve yourself in real life, then it's good for you and good for the people around you. Yeah? And we like to hear that. I just want to tell, not I improve, but that I learned from you this time, this period of time. In this For, time? Yes. In this, uh, in this few, few weeks? Yes. Oh. A lot, because um, you just, how you you concern about everybody and don't think about yourself, and you always give, give, and so detailed and so concerned about everybody, so small or big, and, just that's, I mean, that is a lot for me that I learned from you. Yeah, so so detailed and so take care of everything. Just, well, I don't know. I mean, and just you, here you saw some, but how you see anything yes, else? And you just give and give and just give. You just come here to give. <laughs> okay. I think it's so. You want a candy also? <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Thank you, sir. If, if it helps you. Yeah, but how come somebody still don't move when I empty one space and somebody has to... You know, I cannot keep moving one by one, one by one like that. You, you should know, huh? Mm. And if you don't, and you sit on the back room, think about it, huh? And tomorrow you will feel better. You will know different. You know better. Mongolian? Understand all oh, English? Yeah, I know. You have earphone. <laughs> it's good. So that that is just a learning, but doing is different. <laughs> I mean, anybody improved? Hmm. I don't feel like I give anything much, except my house. <laughs> it's my nature. So you don't feel, but yeah? it's just your nature. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you you've seen some that you like, yeah? <laughs> okay, because it's very difficult to see. But if you're good, then you can see good things in others as well, you know? You recognize it, yeah. Some deep inside, you have some goodness, and you can recognize that easier. In the Zen Buddhism, there was a story about a master who went to talk to the stones, and they're all not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to be a Zen master. All the stones here are nodding sometimes. <laughs> if you don't believe the true story, look around you, and then you know the story is true. Huh? The stone can understand. <laughs> it's not good just to be enlightened inside. Huh? Who cares if you become Buddha or not, if you, don't, if you don't help anyone, if you don't extend your love or expand your consciousness or your wisdom to help someone else in every small thing. Small things, that's important. Big things, oh, heaven takes care. <laughs> here, small things is important, like uh, extra seat is important here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Heaven bless you anything, but you have no seat to sit here, then it is no use. Okay? Yes. Mm. Today I saw some good news on TV, yeah, a little bit good news. Like uh, some German private people, mm. they drove their car all the way to Hungarian uh, Croatia or something border, yeah, to take some refugees, yeah, by themselves, the whole family, mm. and we went and took them to their house, yeah, first, nah, and then they give them just some. 
I don't know, some like some. Uh, I, it's not vegetarian. I'm sorry, but you know their heart is good. I give them some like uh, I say schnitzel in English, huh? Uh, Cotlet something, <laughs> Cotlet. <laughs> it's French, right? <laughs> so schnitzel is German. I am short of English. Help me. Schnitzel? Is it a sausage? No. Schnitzel? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Is it a cookie? No, 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 no. It's a meal. It's a meal. Uh, something like maybe beef steak or something, and they dip it in a bread crumb and they fry it. Venus schnitzel. They coat it in bread crumb and deep fry. Yeah, and then they also deep fry the French fry. For most people in Germany or in in Europe, this is normal, maybe. It's deep inside, uh, coated, and then deep fry, something like that. And just some French fry, that's it. And they say, oh, this luxury <laughs> we couldn't afford for a long time. It take them 17 days, you know, all the way from their country, going through many borders, through many uh, dangers and, you know, harassment by border patrol, and, and then risk their life on the open sea in a small dinghy with fully, fully, fully seated on. Oh, God. And even then, they know that. They still keep doing, keep coming. They know it's dangerous. It's not like they didn't know. Yeah. You know, nowadays everybody know everything on TV or on Internet, no? I still do it. So today there are a couple of German Samaritan, oh, Samaritan. good Samaritan, two, two boys. Yeah, two men. I remember. They drove their own car and pick up the, you know, one fam- two family, and they brought all the way to their home and <laughs> served them with French fry. Oh, the children love love, <laughs> and the thing is a kind of uh, luxury, because in some camp they only have as everyday similar, you know, like from my UN food. That's what they told on TV: the rice and beans, yeah, and salt. And oil, yeah. Um, I was really happy that somebody do that, you know, by their own initiative. <laughs> hey, hey, ciao, bello. <laughs> Hi, handsome. Mm. What is it that you want from here? You want some cookie again? I don't have. Can both somebody give me the cookie? You want some more cookie? Mm? Mm-hmm. Just for snacks, yeah? Not, not that one. Maybe the not this one, he won't eat it. The thinner one. Just give me the whole basket, <laughs> please. Wow, how simple. <laughs> how simple, just to have a cookie you love. <laughs> okay, you got it at the end. Thank you. Cookie? Hmm? Come, you sit down, huh? Sit now. Mm. Why you always sit in front of that? <laughs> the chef. <laughs> Today, he eat your vegan chicken leg. Yeah. He ate them all. I left two for you. <laughs> you didn't see yet? No. Yeah, we did. Eat, eat already? Save. Not save? What for? Come. Come on. It's, a, it's not a proper way, but I don't have anything. Sit down, lay down, eat. Good boy. Why you have to squeeze in front of her like that? <laughs> Come on. You have no room, right? Come on. Don't bother me anymore, okay? Yeah. He's trying not to sit. <laughs> so squeezy. Oh, no, you cannot find your cookie here. You do it for for him. Mm, I love this boy. Best friend. Where were we? What were we talking about? Hmm? What did? In Germany. Ah, Germany. Okay, okay. I was very happy that people really went out of their way to help uh, others in need. Yeah, despite that they're different religions, different background, different languages. But luckily, they spoke some. Some words of German say very good, sehr gut, vielen Dank. <laughs> yeah, 
Zinzi is your net and all that stuff, nah? You're very nice and stuff, yeah. All right. Mm. He likes his cookies a lot. Mm. Just a snack, huh? He ate already. Okay. I read uh, some story today, mm. and I think they are okay. So I can read it to you now. Mm? Yeah. I taste the food before you. <laughs> It's like that. How many new people today? Raise hand. New people? All new? Yeah? Mm. All Mongolian? Oh, we have also Chinese, right? New Chinese? Korean. Korean? New Chinese? No? And the new people sit behind there too? I thought some Vietnamese came today, no? No, no, hola. No, hola today? Okay. One Korea. One Korea. Uh, he already announced. And all Mongolian and Indonesian? Indonesian. Yesterday. Yesterday came. Today is still here. Yes. Of course. Okay. I welcome all of you. First, I felt tired. I don't know why. I didn't do anything much today except washing my clothes, cleaning a little bit here and there. I feel tired. Are you okay? Yeah. Is yes. the weather? Does it make you feel tired? No? no? Oh, it's good. I I think I was tired from everything else, you know, like refugee stuff and stress. And today I was thinking, calling sick. <laughs> like many people do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chef. <laughs> Chief, oh, boss, <laughs> I really can't make it today. What happened to you? I don't know. I just don't. I just don't feel like to go work today. <laughs> oh, look like you have the same sickness like everybody else in the world. <laughs> when they have to wake up in the morning <laughs> and go to work. No, boss, I'm different. <laughs> I'm different. <laughs> I, I, I work for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I still feel, I feel like to want to tell myself that today I'm not up to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't eat much today. I didn't feel like I tried to eat so that I can take the medicine, huh? but uh, don't taste anything. Mm, up to now, I ate only that one in the morning <laughs> until now <laughs> and forced myself. You cook well. I don't mean you don't cook good. always good. Just today, I don't feel like eating. <laughs> and he also didn't eat too much, except the vegan chicken leg, you know? <laughs> buffalo wing. <laughs> vegan buffalo wing. <laughs> I don't know all the names. Buffalo don't have wing, do they? <laughs> they say buffalo wing. <laughs> when I first came to America, I said, you if you want some buffalo wing? I say, what wing? <laughs> wing what? <laughs> Are you Chinese or something? <laughs> and then hot dog. <laughs> I was thinking, it's just a sausage. I like, hot dog? <laughs> just, like, just like they asked me if I like buffalo wing. <laughs> It's a chicken leg, right? What do they call it? Buffalo wing, right? Okay. Oh yeah, my God, I love too much. The candy came down. <laughs> and I was thinking, how come the bu buffalo in America have wings? <laughs> I was so young. Yeah. Mm. What kind of soup today? It's la chum ngay, is it? La chum ngay, I can love Cây. 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 He like to be pet. 
Yeah. <laughs> Specify this guy. <laughs> Why do you need dogs? Translation. <laughs> you put your ears on. Oh, we got Vietnamese, right? I don't think they translate anything. She just tell me what kind of herb tea is that, and that, uh, they have them now in Europe, imported. Mm. This is a moringa, you know. What is? Moringa. Moringa? Yeah. Oh, it sounds like a, a cake, you know, moringa, <laughs> lemon moringa. <laughs> oh. huh? it's yeah, okay. Wow. Nowadays they discover so many new stuff from the, the vegetable kingdom, huh? Mm. And discuss more about vegan and vegetarian diet on 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 TV nowadays. Uh, advertise vegetarian and stuff. I think they they copy somebody. <laughs> and I'm very glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the title is the lay disciple, named Atula. <laughs> mm. This uh, instruction was given by uh, the Buddha while, while he was in residence at Jetavana with a reference to the lay disciple Atula. Atula was a lay disciple. I don't know why they say lay disciple. Why not standing? <laughs> why not sit disciple? Huh? Anybody explain to me? I, I, I think lay disciple means the, the one not in the monk. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> for your explanation. Why lay? Mm. I had no reason, huh? Yeah. yeah. Lay disciple. Mm. Here I don't have any lay disciple. I have only sit disciple. <laughs> That's why I wonder why the Buddha called him lay disciple. Okay. Sitting disciples. <laughs> This is a story about a lay disciple <laughs> of the Buddha. Okay. He lived in uh, Savati and he had a retinue of 500 other lay disciples. <laughs> Probably at that time they like to lay down, <laughs> they don't like to sit. So he even had followers. Yeah. One day he took those lay disciples with him to the to the mon to a monastery to hear the Dharma Dharma teaching, yeah? I mean the real teaching yeah, of the Buddha. They use that and specify in mostly in Buddhism. In other teaching mostly they don't say Dharma. <laughs> He's just trying to be friendly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm very proud of you. Friendly dog. Completely different dog now. Okay, he he trusted human now a lot. He trusts everybody. <laughs> Don't trust too much, yeah. You got to remember somebody are not too good, and when they come, you have to protect me, huh? I mean, <laughs> I only have you as a bodyguard, huh? In my cave. <laughs> no, he only trusted you because you are vegan and you practice, and he. He feels a different energy, I guess. Huh? In your inside is good. Yeah. But he doesn't second with everybody, you know. Even sometimes I tell second with this person, he don't. Yeah. So it's a privilege. <laughs> he helped me also to eliminate some of the not too good people around me. Yeah. In different ways, you know? Yeah, different ways. He caused it to happen. One day he took those lay disciples with him, 500, always 500, 500 or 84,000, <laughs> Buddha's favorite numbers. Oh, yeah. Meaning a great following, yeah, a great a big retinue. Yeah. Desiring to hear the elder Revata teach the Dharma, he saluted the elder Revata and sat down respectfully on one side. I think they both two sides, you know, like one side for man, one side for woman. Yeah. And in the middle is for walking. Yeah. I guess it's like that. We don't even have a walk place here. <laughs> we use them all up. Now this elder Revata was a solitary recluse. Means uh, he liked to be alone. Hmm? He doesn't like to uh talk or teach other people. Hmm. 
delighting in solitude, even as a lion delights in solitude. And thus he had nothing to say to Atula and his following. So Atula thought to himself, this elder has nothing to say. Elder, monk, yeah? same, same. This monk has nothing to say. Uh, he feel provoked, uh, vexed, or maybe provoked. Could be angry? No. Frustrated? Agitated? Yeah, he felt agitated. So he arose from his seat, went to the elder Sariputra, the other monk, and took his stand respectfully on one side. Uh, so elderly Sariputra asked him, For what reason have you come to me? Reverend sir, replied Atula, I took these lay disciples of mine to hear the Dharma and approach the elder Revata. But he had nothing to say to me, therefore I was provoked. <laughs> what kind of... Oh, I was probably vexed, ne? or vexed, ne? or provoked. It's okay too? Okay, so therefore I was provoked. How can somebody provoke you when he say nothing? <laughs> right? Isn't that a funny <laughs> definition of, of provocation? I thought provocation has to have something to do with at least some gesture or some, you know, frowning face or some word or something. He said nothing, do nothing. He minds his own business. He sat alone. He wants to be alone. And you came by yourself there and then... Tell everybody that he provoked you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's better if you want to be a, a recluse. I mean, you know, an ascetic, live alone and don't want to say anything, don't do anything to nobody. And you better put yourself in a sack, you know, a bag. <laughs> so nobody, can, nobody can blame you for anything. I'm not there. I'm hiding. I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. So people can be provoked by, by nothing. Huh? So remember that, okay? Yeah, I, I, it sounds familiar to me. <laughs> it sounds familiar to me. People, huh? The humans, they're funny. Complicated mind, huh? Ah, the complication of the mind's uh, structure also enables us to, to be more intelligent than many of other subspecies, you know, uh, animal species. And also enable us to be able to invent things, you know, communicate with each other in such an intelligent and elegant way. But also it's make trouble for us. It's too complicated. It recorded everything and then it just spill out everything. <laughs> the brain, the mindless brain is like computer. It's cause also a lot of trouble for us. This brain is a complicated uh, system. It helps us, but it's complicated our life too, huh? Eh? Yeah. Okay, so Atula replied, Reverend Sir, I took these lay disciples of mine, you know, very proud, 500 disciples. <laughs> I should be a lot more proud than he, right? <laughs> we outnumber him, huh? Eh? Okay. All right. I'm very proud, <laughs> so proud. <laughs> yeah, these are lay, lay disciples of mine. Sit, so. <laughs> these are sitting disciples of mine. So very proud. Yeah. All right. I took these disciples of mine, lay disciples of mine, to hear the Dharma and approach the elder Revata. But he had nothing to say to me. Therefore, I was provoked. <laughs> so. So I feel sorry for him. He's provoked, <laughs> my God, by the guy who doesn't know, who has nothing to say. Maybe, maybe he's dumb, no? Huh? He couldn't talk. Who well, no, knows? You have to ask, no? Don't ask. Just feel provoked and left. Fine. So I have come here. Teach the Dharma to me, just like that. <laughs> Like an order in French fry or something. <laughs> One portion. <laughs> and well done. <laughs> well fried. Oh, actually, today I saw them serving French fry on TV. I feel like having some. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> we don't have any. We can make 
Yeah, uh, uh, I, oh, okay. Uh, oh, it takes so long. No, no, no. I wanted to ask, but I feel shy, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I want to make for you, so for today? today? No, not today, but I think. Oh, uh-huh. oh, Why didn't you? <laughs> mine. Mine okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. she don't like school. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Well, Maybe it's not good for... Not good for health? No, no. Good. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> now and then, good for the taste. Always health, yeah. health, yeah. health. Come and then on. I eat nothing. You'll have it fresh tomorrow. Why tomorrow? <laughs> Always tomorrow, tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I lost the appetite for that. Tomorrow they will show something else on TV. <laughs> on the news, you know? This is a problem. I just watch the news and I even introduce a French fry in it. Tomorrow you don't look at the uh, the news. (laughs) I have to. I have to know what's going on, you know, physically, yeah? Yeah. If I didn't watch the TV, then I wouldn't have been able to help the refugees these days, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's also good. I can save my money. (laughs) Do what? (laughs) Yeah, okay. Now, so... The elder Sariputra, the monk Sariputra, said to him, "Uh, Well then, lay disciple. He even called him disciple. Said the elder Sariputra, Sit down. (laughs) Sit, (laughs) like my dog. (laughs) Sit down. And forthwith the elder Sariputra expounded the Abhidharma at great length. Wow, lucky guy, huh? He took all his time to tell him Dharma in detail in great length. Yeah. See what he react. He must have been happy, no? This uh, lay disciple and the five hundred. All the lay disciples <laughs> <laughs> they should have been happy, right? Yes. You would think, right? Since the other guy, the other monk sorry, said nothing and he feel provoked. <laughs> so now this Sariputra said a lot, so he should have be have been very happy. That's what we think. Thought the lay disciple. No, the uh, this uh, Atula. <laughs> By the way, Atula in Vietnamese means Ashura. You know, mean <laughs> mean this low level Astro, Astro level. <laughs> Maybe that's why his name, Atula. <laughs> so the Atula thought to himself, the Abhidhamma is exceedingly abstruse. What is abstruse? Abstruse. Abstruse, yeah. Yeah, uh, difficult to uh, comprehend. Uh huh, yeah, I think so. Huh? Too profound and too complicated and too deep and too mysterious and too difficult to understand, too difficult. <laughs> oh, wait, whatever. Exceedingly even. Abstruse. 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 <laughs> and, <laughs> and the elder has expounded this alone to me at great length. Oh, you should feel honor and... (laughs) No. Of what use is he to us? Okay. Provoked, he took his retinue with him again and went to the elder Ananda. (laughs) He felt provoked again because Sariputra talked a lot, (laughs) explained to him in great detail. Said the elder Ananda, What is it, lay disciple? Atula replied, Reverend sir, we approached the elder Revata for the purpose of hearing the Dharma and got not so much as a syllable from him. A syllable? Uh, A letter? Part of a word. Yeah, a letter. Not even one word, one letter from him. (laughs) Not even an A. Yeah. Yeah, my God. So I feel provoked at this. So we went to the elder Sariputra, and he expounded to us at great length the Abhidhamma alone with all its subtleties. Subtleties. Of what, is, of what use is he to us? I mean, nonsense, no good. We thought to ourselves and feel provoked by him also. So we came here. Yeah, he's always provoked. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Teach the Dharma to us. 
Reverend Sir. Well, at, the, at least he said, Reverend Sir, teach now. He didn't say please, but he said, teach it to us. So, you know, <laughs> Reverend Sir. Well then, replied the elder Ananda, sit down and listen. Thereupon, the elder Ananda expounded the Dharma to them very briefly, making it very easy for them to understand. Because he was thinking Sariputta maybe make it too, probably too eloquent, too elegant, too high Hindus or high English, you know what I mean? Yeah, something like that. Yeah? Sometimes you read the whole page of English, but you don't understand a thing, even though you were born in England and speak and learn all your life. You don't know what they're talking about. It happened to me, maybe... Maybe not to everybody, but to me. Sometimes I read some of the, I don't know, whatever, literature report, or I don't know what they're talking about. I keep reading re- again and again. <laughs> I don't get the, the, point. the point, you know? Yeah. That's why in my poetry I don't use any of these fancy, flowery words. I use words that is downright, you know, simple, so everybody can understand. But very deep. Yeah, uh, yes, and true is real, you know, it's uh, truthful. Yeah. And it's taught to people yeah. because they also understood. That's the way they think also. But doesn't mean it's uh, shallow, no? Yeah. Poetic, indeed. Poetic, yeah. Sometimes I deliberately use some word that is, is not so, like, uh, elegant or anything like that. Yeah. Just to express what I wanted to express without making too much ado. But they were provoked <laughs> at the Reverend Ananda also, <laughs> and going to the Buddha. Now <laughs> going to the uh, Supreme Court, <laughs> Supreme Buddha, and saluted him and sat down respectfully on one side. Well, at least they do respectfully sit down. <laughs> Wow, what's the use of having so all this respect when they're always provoked at any words or no words from the monks? Said the teacher, the Buddha, to them, Lay disciples, why have you come here? To hear the Dharma, reverend sir. <clears throat> yeah, if they could even hear anything. Some people are like that, you know? They will say they want to come to hear the Dharma from you, you know, but they don't really hear, they don't want to, they just go there. Yeah. And then so later they can say, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> because they hear nothing. <laughs> they already put the wall right in front of them, between themselves and the teacher already. They didn't really want to. Come here. you want to come? Ah, that's why he has to bark, because there's a gate there, huh? People stop you from coming here. How dare they? <laughs> this is your house, even. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he used to stay in, in this house, in front of this house. The hut they made for him, and when it's cold, I put them, him in the kitchen. And the three dogs stay here. Yeah. Mm. I love you. Mm. You bored outside, huh? And too crowded in here, and outside is too lonely, right? So. You don't know what you want, huh? Do you know what you want? Hmm? You do? <laughs> All right then, stay here. Hmm? Give me a kiss. Hmm. You have heard the Dharma already, said the Buddha to Atula and, and the company. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Sir, first we went to the elder Revata and he had nothing to say to us. Provoked at him, <laughs> we approached the elder Sariputra and he expounded the Apik Dharma to us at great length. But we were unable to understand his discourse and provoked at him. He, he's always using this. We approached the elder Ananda. The elder, the elder Ananda, however, expounded the Dharma to us very briefly. So, yeah. Therefore, we were provoked at him also and came here. It's very unreasonable, yeah. Hmm? Unreasonable. Okay, I know what you want. I know your language. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Veggie dental. Dental snacks. Yeah. Therefore, we were provoked at him also and came here. 
to wear or not to wear. <laughs> I was provoked also <laughs> in my cave when I have to look for overgarment and dress in here and there just to look uh, okay. <laughs> I, I may go to India one day, simple, you know, <laughs> wear ash only, because we are ash anyway. <laughs> and then we become ash when we die. So why not begin to remember now, you know, put ash all over on your body, and then you, you will not think nonsense anymore. You know from ash you, you are, and to ash you will return. <laughs> That's the meaning of these uh, naked uh, ascetic. You know, they're supposed to remind themselves mm -hmm. that life is short and everything is ash anyway, you know. So these are gray ash, these are, uh, pink ash, you know. Yeah, uh, white ash. <laughs> right here. <clears throat> it's so simple right there then. Mm. Suppose I go there and became like the guy is the other day. We talk about the ascetic, Naga ascetic. Would you still follow my button then? <laughs> I would not have no any more button left. But I couldn't care a button about what you think then. Huh? Over here, I still care. But if I go there and join this, huh? Ascetic. And I probably couldn't care a button about what you think. <laughs> Then the Buddha replied, Atula, from days of old until now, it has been the invariable practice of man to blame him who said nothing, him who said much, and him who said little. There is no one who deserves unqualified blame and no one who deserves unqualified praise. Even kings are blamed by some and praised by others. Even the great earth, even the sun and the moon, even the supremely enlightened Buddha, sitting and speaking in the midst of their fourfold assembly, some blame and other praise. Fourfold assembly? Anybody remember what I said? What are the fourfold? I'm playing teacher right now. <laughs> Monks, nuns, laymen, laywoman, even though they're all sitting yeah? <laughs> together in front of the Buddha. They sit there, but they listen, but some praise the hymn, you know, some praise the Buddha, and some blame hmm, or criticize. It sounds familiar to me. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Sound familiar to you? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> me, very familiar. Absolutely familiar. You, huh? Shopping for love, huh? Mm. Okay. What if they're all gone, and then what will I do with you? <laughs> it's getting a little colder now, you know? October, I don't think it's good to be here, too cold. Maybe some days it's good, though. Not every day is cold. Um, but I don't know if it's good or not to let people come. I'm still thinking about it, you know? Yeah, I'm still thinking about October. Because uh, I remember before it was cold. But this year, kind of warm. Uh, even September, you know, still very warm in daytime. 23, 24, 25, 26. Yeah, so warm. <sighs> okay. Blame or praise bestowed by utter simpletons is a matter of no account. I mean, not important. Yeah, it's not, yes. No, not at all, yeah. If some blame you or praise you, make not important at all, yeah. What is, what is? Mm? You don't have enough love here. You are really something. You want me to bring food for you here? Mm? You mess up the floor if you eat those food here. He probably still want his food from the cave. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I'm worried he mess up the carpet. Okay, can you try? Yeah, yeah, just 
Yeah, before in front of the kitchen. Yes. There are two kinds. One is with rice and one with just a pellet. Just bring both. Bring both. When they praise you or when they blame you, it's, it's not doesn't matter at all. <laughs> they don't have any intelligence to even praise you or to blame you. They have nothing to say. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what they say. Yeah. But he whom a man of learning and intelligence blames or praises, he is blamed or praised indeed. Understand? Yeah. Whoever uh, is blamed by a, a sound, a sound judge pers- judging person, the good person, the intelligent person, then he is truly blamed. And if that true, if a uh, person who has sound judgment judges you or blames you, then you are truly judged, and rightly so. Yeah. Then that means it's important for you. Yeah, important to listen to that person. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza, stanzas. You know, he mean he he shortened his uh, discourse by a poem. From days of old it has been Atula. This is not only of today. They blame one who keeps silent. They blame one who speaks much. They blame one who says little too. There is no one in the world unblamed. <laughs> Nothing to do. <laughs> Go around blaming. There never was and never will be, nor is there found at present a person blamed exclusively, not nor yet one wholly praised. Yeah. Nobody has always been praised only, and nobody has always been blamed alone. Even the Buddha, Jesus, yeah, or the prophet, even though, though they do only good things. Why is that? Can you tell me why? Hmm? Maya. Maya? <laughs> Because of the ignorance. It, because of ignorance, yeah. Yeah, now you turn around, turn around over there. Yep, that's it. Good. Down. Sit. Lay down. Hey. Down, 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 down. Down, man. Don't sit, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants you, invite you guy to eat it with him. <laughs> <laughs> You eat alone, eh? We don't eat your leftover, okay? <laughs> oh. Okay, I understand. Okay. Now, you open this, you put it on some of his, one of his things there. Okay. His friendship is not unconditional. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wants. Yeah. Let's break a little bit and just put any, any, any bowl we find. Yeah. Let's just shake it down. He can chew it, it doesn't matter. If the wise praise a man, after observing him day and by day, one of flawless conduct, astute, in wisdom and virtue, well composed, who can blame that worthy one like ornament of finest gold? Even the devas praise him. By Brahma too he is praised. Yeah. If somebody who knows that's a virtuous person and that person is wise, and if that's why pers- wise person prays this virtuous person, then it's a true praise and it's a correct one. Okay, huh? That's the uh, end of one story. Mm. Applause. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks and nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. 
May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. I applaud you also for being so quiet. Did you really listen? Yes. Mm, good. Then it's good. It's good to have a small room. Your mind cannot wander too long. <laughs> it's just hang around here so you listen better. No? <laughs> yeah. Right? Even he listened well. He listened to the sound of the cookies. <laughs> oh, he liked this cookie too much, that's why. But it's not very nutritious, you know. Uh, never mind. Now and then I spoil you. Yeah. How did you eat today? Everything good? Same? Raw? Half raw? Hmm. And you still like it? Uh, like it or not, when you're hungry, taste good. <laughs> and uh, just a few days, you know? Yeah, try to be raw. Maybe at home you continue that. You don't have to cook a lot. Hmm? Hmm. Nowadays, a lot of food already cooked, huh? So we just uh, eat together with salad. Master, how did you find this dog? He found me. <laughs> I went to give donation to one of the adoption dog center, and he was sitting there, staring at me in all directions, wherever I go. And all, all the dogs were just barking crazily, like usual, you know. So I noticed him. <laughs> That's it. End the story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's quiet for a long time. All the uh, 250 dogs barking around him everywhere, crazily. They always do when some new people come. Also, people bring food. Or something. They, they want to go out, you know? They want to get attention. Adopt me, take me home, like that. Help me. He say nothing. He just sit there very quietly and do great, with great dignity. Just looking at me. <laughs> yeah. And then when I came back again, I said, I will adopt him for Christmas. And they begin to tell me all bad story about him. You know, that he's a bad dog, you know, he bites. That's what they said. It scared me a little, you know, for my assistant and for my dogs as well. So it put me off for two weeks. And then when I look at him, he look at me, and he start barking very loud. <laughs> yeah, like everybody else, you know, protesting, I guess. So I tell him to sit. He sit immediately. Yeah, in English, huh? Yeah. It was in another language country. It's not in England. He sat immediately. So I said to the assistant, "What? What, what are you saying about this dog? He he's so obedient. He sit." And she said, oh, yeah, he said, but, you know, <laughs> that's all he does, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, I have to go home and they introduce me all kind of other dogs. Oh, we have so many dogs here. Adopt another one. Don't adopt him. Don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I came back and uh, some weeks later, two months later, yeah, I had to come back. So I check out, he came down to find me. Yeah. So I had to come for him. I said, he came down. If he came down for me, I have to be there for him. Yeah. Yeah. So we together. And then when I came there, I said, I want to adopt him now. So they said, no, today Saturday. You must come back Monday. I said, no, today. <laughs> I said, but think again. You know, he's a bad, and you know, this and that and others. I say, no, don't say anything more negative. Pray for him. I, I love him and he will love me and no problem. That's what I felt. And I told them that. They still didn't want to give me him. So I say, okay, I, took, I take him home now and I come back Monday. Because they say I have to come back Monday for bureaucracy, you know, for passport and stuff like that, for the doctor to check if he's okay. I say, okay, I bring him back Monday. 
Yeah, and then he brought him back Monday. When he came back on Monday, oh, he ran from back and forth, back and forth from all the kennels. He ran and said hello to all the dogs and run so fast, so fast, so happily jumping around. And they also look like he's happy, so I said, okay, maybe it's good, but we will see. They told me, we will see. <laughs> Warning me like that. So I called him many times again and said, he's still with me, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, you are a good boy. I love you too bit. Yeah. Uh, for 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 you probably you don't feel anything much for me. I don't know. I just feel love. <laughs> yeah, he looked like a silly dog, you know, no expression or anything. But he's really loving. He's a cool. He's a cool guy. He loves me a lot. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sleepy. Yeah. Of course, yeah, my voice <laughs> put everybody else to sleep as well. <laughs> Last night, the one person snore even very loud. <laughs> How can you blame a dog? <laughs> even I, I sleep myself too. <laughs> when I hear myself talking, <laughs> I also want to sleep. <laughs> I wanted to sleep before I even came here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I cannot imagine I still sit here and talk. <laughs> are you happy? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Why are you so happy? <laughs> huh? Just meet with you and see you. Uh, see me, right? But you saw me many times, and a lot of you saw me many times. Huh? Still like to see, man. I'm a likable person right here, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, any question or any suggestion or any problem? Hmm? Have, you want to say something? No? Uh, yeah? Yes? No? I just want to meditate better than I do. Oh, you still don't meditate well? Mm, even here? Yeah. What happened? What is it? I don't know why. Mm. Where do you sit? Um. By the tree. The tree there? <laughs> Under the Bodhi tree? <laughs> here we have only olive trees. So that's why. <laughs> the Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree 49 days. That's why I got enlightenment. That's it. That's the secret. The Bodhi tree. We have to go and buy some Bodhi tree for him. <laughs> and then you sit 49 days non stop. <laughs> then, then we will see. What is it? Your mind wandering around? Uh, yeah, that's typical, huh? Because of work, you know, because of so used to thinking what to do at home, huh? Not too much to think about, though. So I just I think about little things, you know. In here? Yeah, not so important, you know. Just like what, what clothing, what brush my teeth, go uh, for a walk, my legs hurt. Hurt? Oh, <laughs> then don't 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 just just dress it up. <laughs> Stretch it out, please. Come on, stretch your legs. Oh, you can't now. <laughs> you can turn around and stretch on the other side, or one leg here, one leg there. I don't care. Just be comfy, okay? I told everybody. I can't keep telling all the time. We have to make a list, you know? Like, you can stretch your leg anytime. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And if it's cold, please go inside. Yeah? And if you need to brush your teeth, just go brush, don't think. <laughs> Understand? Yeah? And we all also have like direction. Uh, direction, the arrow that points you different direction. Main toilet, south, <laughs> kitchen, east, yeah? Master, west. <laughs> yeah. uh, I say, Master X. Sleeping room. <laughs> I mean, upstairs, not up in heaven. Huh? Also, yes, but okay. And we can have a, a direct direction like that, no? In outside, and also, if you want to see the dog this way, but but better don't see, <laughs> better not. <laughs> he will come see you. What else we say? What else we have to tell everybody? I'm just sitting here talking nonsense, so you can see me. You never know if you see me again tomorrow, right? Yeah. Life is uncertain. No. Do you need something to wrap your legs? 
We have some ointment. I have some. Okay. It pains you? Is that rheumatism? No, I, I don't. I don't know why. It's like, oh, maybe just all the time or just here. Just here. Ah, oh, maybe the dampness. Uh, we live in a good place, but it still is not very dry like Arizona. Okay. So you're not used to it. Arizona is very dry. It's desert-like. It's hot, but it has goodness in it because it's dry. It don't cause pain. Here it's cool, you know, but it's damp. Yeah, all the trees also, you know, produce some something. I give you some medicine. I have some in my bathroom, in my shower room. I go and get it. I just saw it. I just saw it. I will get it for you. Ah, uh, so what else do we want? What else I I should write about? Oh, okay. If you want to go to Australia, the fire down, down under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you want to go to Border Tree, point to India direction. <laughs> okay. Mm. Different olive trees, yeah, all direction. Yeah. <laughs> Border Tree, olive. To the, is that the west or east? East, huh? India, no? Huh? Oh. That's it. Okay. Mm. If you want to go Arizona, that way, no? <laughs> Wherever. Yeah. To go to the underworld, also down, no? Huh? Under the world. What? To heaven, up. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. Any other question? Any problem? Master, in the prophecy that you read of Peter and Judas. Oh, you heard that? Yeah, even already? Okay. Yes, they're broadcasting it now. It was. Fabulous. Just now? Um, in the last week. Okay. In the last week. And uh, uh, in that prophecy um, to do with it's like heaven coming to earth, yeah. is it a complete heaven or is there still going to be suffering and pain here as well or is it will be a complete heaven where there's no suffering and pain? Phew, I, uh, I wish. <laughs> I wish you say the first one, yeah. But it's human has free will, you know. They have to decide their faith. But heaven come down to earth in some way, okay? Yeah, it will bless the people who have a good reception, eh? who has good merit in some other life or this life. And that blessing will be there, double, triple, you know, more. Strengthen their faith in heaven, in God, you know, in the Buddha teaching, and also help them uh, overcome many difficulties in their life, yeah? And uh, their uh, spiritual. Elevation will be faster and more obvious, but that heaven will not be visible to many humans. Yeah, we we can see it if we have this uh, blessed eyes, eye. Yeah, because imagine if there is truly a continent physically appear in the Pacific, and God really sat there with all the retinue of the sixth race. Imagine. The world will let them in peace. We let God sit there. No. Huh? They will come and sell hot properties <laughs> and mark their territory and make line and make frontier again, and then the continent will be divided into many countries. Yeah, and then uh, each, uh, you know, muscle guy will take one part of the continent. And then may, maybe in no time God and the six rays will be kicked out. Yeah. You know, here muscle wins, yeah. So even if God established is sit there, is is like connection to higher heaven and God will be present on earth, but invisibly. Maybe visible to some few. Okay? And that rays is also will be invisible. They don't need physical body. Maybe sometime they take on physical body to go around the world for some purpose, yeah, blessing or something. But uh, we will not be able to see that. Yeah. Imagine if it's true. Imagine if it's physical. Do you think God will be able to sit there? They will come and ask for his ID, passport. Huh? Where are you from? <laughs> what language do <laughs> you speak? You know. He has to prove his identity, and all the people from the sixth race have to prove all of their identity and their right of, of ownership <laughs> of that continent. Yeah? Hmm. 
For example, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's not that easy. They already threatened to go to Mars and to <laughs> to, to to you know, do something there already. Or any other places. Moon already already sold. Yeah. You don't know that? It's true. There was a guy who even claimed his ownership of the moon already, and he saw out of it already, and some people bought them. <laughs> he earned millions of dollars. Just uh, issue a certificate, you know? Make a map of the moon, and which side, that side, and then how much did you pay for, for how, how big the land? You don't know that? It's in America. Everything happened in America. <laughs> it's a land of possibility. <laughs> No, I was also surprised. He even owned other, like you know, Neptune and whatever surrounding here, except the sun and the earth. He owns everything else. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, he just had an idea, and now he's a millionaire, multi-millionaire. And many movie star even buy a piece of land in Moon already. So imagine, huh? So difficult to go up there. And he has never seen the moon personally. <laughs> I mean, never set foot on it. He's selling it like hotcakes. A lot of people buying them, big names. Even movie star big names also. Everybody buy a piece of land in, on the moon already. So imagine if God has a new continent and established himself there. Do you think they will leave him alone? Huh? Yeah, look what happened to Jesus when he said he's the Son of God. Only Son of God even, not even God yet. Understand? And now if the poor God came there and let himself be known, sure, I don't know how we can protect him. <laughs> so it's just like a spiritual, okay, spiritual presence, because God can be connected from here all the way now. Understand that? Mm. And so... This continent, whatever that may be, must be kept pure, pure and spiritual, so that the sixth being could even bear it to be here. Uh, so God can even bear it. Understand? Mm, okay. So everybody keep waiting for the continent, huh? New continent, huh? Hmm? Really? Well, well, you, you sort of indicated that maybe it was spiritual or maybe it was physical. And, and when when you spoke, and it was like, wow, physical. Yeah, physical would be nice. It's there already. Just we don't see. Hmm? Okay. But don't tell anybody else, <laughs> because they will find a way. You know, computer or robot or whatever. They're scanning the whole Pacific. Who knows? <laughs> they they have been able to scan the light from all the beings already, from plants, from leaves, from bushes, you know, from fruit, from meat, raw meat. So what next they cannot do? It's just that they will not be able to destroy or kill or do anything to that continent and those beings, even if they can scan and know that something existed there. Understand me? They could not. That, that is the beauty of it. Because if it's physical, it's more risky. Yeah. No need, no need physical. <laughs> yeah. We all dream of that, so we cannot go there and say, then it won't be heaven anymore. <laughs> if all of us come, some may be okay, some are not. Uh, any more questions? What was also very nice is that in the prophecy and how you read it and everything was the fact that finally God would have a place to lay his head on this earth. You know, all the masters like yourself and, and you know where to actually lay your head that's truly your home. Oh, I don't have a home here. <laughs> yeah, I can stay here also, but it's not necessary. Yeah. yeah. I understood what you say. Yeah, it doesn't need to just that. If he's here, then it's a blessing for the planet, yeah. It's good. Mm, very good. Thank you, Master. You're welcome. How come your hair is so short now? What happened? Uh, you like it? Like No, no. Chemotherapy, Master. Oh, God, you had it? Yes, I had chemotherapy. How can that be? I was thinking like that. I was, I was thinking, but I didn't dare to just say. Yes, yes. Uh, is you okay now? Uh, I'm supposedly yes. I'm not quite finished treatment, but uh, uh, but okay. But you I look can... healthy. Yes, thank mm. you. You look okay. Can you tell me? I have some more questions. What is the reason behind cancer, apart from? Uh... 
maybe some uh, loophole in your system. Loophole, loopholes, yeah, that it can sneak in, you know. But uh, mostly it's from DNA, you know. Some some group of people are more prone to cancers than other group, but it could be even be contaminated by others, you know. Uh, too much nearness to some patient, uh, your patient, to somebody you took too much at heart, and that trigger a kind of so-called sympathetic response. So you share. It's interesting you said that, Master, because I started work at a new clinic and I was there 15 months and it was cancer after cancer after cancer after cancer. It was just incredible. And so many young people. And then the irony of it all was after 15 months, the doctor also got cancer, which was me. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Okay. You too sympathetic, that's why. You put your all into it, that's why. You should put a little bit distance between the patient and yourself. Yeah, but you didn't. You tried too hard. It's okay then. We always have to pay the price for love, even though everybody tells you love is free. Love has no co- costs nothing. It costs a lot. <laughs> if it's a real love, it's unconditional love, you know, true sympathetic love, it costs a lot. It always costs something, but we like to do that. So that's it's okay now. At least you're okay. You look good. Why did you go to the new clinic? Um, well, um, it's still within the same uh, organization, ah, and ah. they opened a new clinic, and basically it was a much closer to home. Oh, I see. And so you know, it was only twenty minutes from home. Yeah. And but I was just astounded because the the amount of cancer was just incredible, yeah. incredible. Yeah. And America. Mas- Ameri- yes, and they're saying, Master, that uh, one in every three women and one in every two men will get cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know and it's, that. And it's and I know in South Africa you said that there is a cure for every disease on this planet. It's just that a lot of it is blocked, this information. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, business, yeah. Many things are blocked, for example, the good of humanity. Many are blocked. Otherwise, we would have been more developed, you know, more prosperous, more happy, yeah, happier than what we are right now. It's a sad, but it's c'est la vie, okay? Mm. Until all the consciousness of people in this planet more elevated, we still have to undergo all this. Yeah, but thank God that you have treatment. Okay, some people can't afford that even, or don't have the opportunity to find out. It's good. It's good. I'm sorry. Tell you, sometimes convenience not always convenient. But we cannot. We cannot always. Decide, right? There's always a choice, and sometimes we took the wrong choice because it looked better. It's not always. Yes, it's not always. That's why. That's why sometimes I even clean my own house, cook for myself. Uh, Because it's better somebody else cook for me or wash my clothes or clean my house. But they bring a lot of things as well. But they even feel like I. I owe them something, even that. Yeah. A lot of people who are rich and they have a lot of servants and all that, but they cost a lot. They cost not not money, not just money, they can afford it. It costs a lot in terms of exchange energy, in terms of uh, exchange karma. Yeah. And life after life. even if you pay people, sometimes you have to pay them extra than just money. Extra, you know, your merit, your wellness, your happiness. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I saw or somehow it's leaking somehow somewhere that rich people they have a lot of servants, but they don't always feel that happy. Just more like a opulent and a sterile kind of life, you know, always wake up at that time, food on the table, <laughs> servant with the necktie, yeah, and the butler or whatever, you know, and scooping thing for you here and there. Yeah. I don't know if I could live that kind of life though. I probably could. 
<laughs> but knowing too much is also not good for you. <laughs> Some people feel sorry that I live in a cave or a hut. Don't be. I'm happier than living in the house. I feel less heavy somehow, you know. Yeah, sometimes convenient comfort are not always convenient and comfort. If you hadn't taken that shorter road home, you probably have been better off. But it's too late now to say. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to that clinic as well, Master. Should All I right not? then. <laughs> okay then. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know, you didn't have to ask me. You know why? Hmm. <laughs> you know why, right? <laughs> Oh, oh! You didn't know. I did, I didn't. In actual fact, my husband suggested what you said. He said that you, you, it's a transference from all the patients yes. you've seen, and it's, that and you didn't block it. It is well known. Yeah, it is well known that like a psychological uh, doctor, sometimes they get also cuckoo. <laughs> in 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 the end, uh, mm, cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah. because he took care of so many. I change with them. Hmm? They do say that physicians get a lot of the very weird diseases, the very unusual ones. And this particular, it was a breast cancer. It was an extremely rare one, Master, only 1% of all breast cancers. So it's extremely rare cancer. It's not a, not, not a usual run-of-the-mill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess it's, it's the same thing that you... So amongst physicians, this seems to happen, that they get all the very weird, very rare type yeah. of phenomena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would be explained by this transference principle you were just yeah. saying. Not just uh, doctors, but you know, gurus, you know, yeah, of any kind. They do get some weird thing and rare thing, even though they physically should not have that. Yeah. Well, the price we pay... Okay. Thank you, Master. Same. Yeah, very obvious. Even you love your children and all that, but they did give you a lot of headache too, no? Definitely. And trouble. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. You you get older quicker. Yes. Yeah, you get old quicker and you exhausted more than usual. Yeah. Everything costs something in this life. So if you don't want it, mm, quickly and Take your button up there, <laughs> go to heaven, and don't come back. This world is like that. It's a give and take. In Vietnam, we say, uh, yeah. meaning, uh, if you live by your profession, you will die by that. Yeah, yeah. Do they say that in England? Yes, in they English? do. If you what live did they by say? The same thing. If you live by your profession, you can die by your profession. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it's not always obvious, but uh, it's related to, to your work. Yeah, it's related it's, to It's you. obvious in infectious disease, Master. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, you know, the, the doctor gets malaria or, oh, or yeah. whatever, oh. but it's not so obvious in, the, in like, cancer, for yeah, example. Yeah. I you understand. Know? You yeah. would think it's just normal. Yes. Women have that. It's not like that. Yes. You're not supposed to have that, but it's okay now. It's yeah. fine. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Master. It's also cleansing off. <laughs> yes, paying back karma. Is it, is it karma from the past as well, Master, that people get cancer? Karma from the past, like definitely yes, yes, yeah. Um, but also lifestyle, you know, mm. lifestyle. You can avoid it. Can avoid it. Yeah. Like if, like even the physicians say, if you became vegan, then you you can avoid many heart disease, or you can reverse it even. You see, so that's good. I don't don't create more karma. Yeah, then it's better. It's better. But in your case, you didn't run away, so you plunge into it. <laughs> but it's okay. These patients has been related to you in some former lives. Yeah, they have helped you. So therefore, you feel very sympathetically responsive to them, and so there is a connection there. So you create the kind of loopholes. And so it just seep into your system quietly until you know it. Okay? So okay, everything happened is there's some reason. Hmm? All right. And the question? Yeah, the front here. 
Hello, Master. It's such an incredible moment that I can see you here, Master. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm very happy, Master. Why? You didn't see me before? <laughs> yes, once in Thailand, Master. Uh-huh. It that was, was from... Uh, you have to use the, <laughs> it was nine years ago, Master. Far away and you have to use the... the how do you say this? Uh, huh? Binocular to see me, right? <laughs> it's too far, too many people. <laughs> I don't have any question to ask, Master. I just want to share my happiness. Um, two months. Everybody catch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two months ago. Uh, two months and two months ago, I I got the dream. I dream about you, Master. You came into my dream. You give me a hug. And then I was very happy. And you also whisper something into my right ear. But I could never remember what you were saying at that time. <laughs> I also don't remember. <laughs> if you hear it, you don't remember how I remember. Yeah. I try really, really hard to remember what you were saying, Master, but it was just in vain. But now I understand. I understand already. You did? Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> you asked me to come here, Master. Oh. I think so. Yeah. And come here to see you, Master. Okay, is good. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a, such a good dream, Master. I love you. <laughs> it seems so real that you appear in my dream. It seems really real. I never would like to have such a dream. <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. You're blessed. Yeah. Thank you, Master. She told you to meditate more deeply. Mm, that's all. Okay? Go oh, deeply. Yeah. And that helps you. Help you to go deeper than before. Mm. Any other question? Before I eat another candy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to eat. What is it? Just right in front of me. Don't put anything in front of me. I just eat. It's not even taste or need. Today I had sore throat though, from last night. Sometimes it just come like that. Yeah. If I lay down, I lay this side, no problem. If I lay in this side, immediately running nose or sore throat also. This is from nowhere. And now no more uh, running nose. It run before, you see? What? Yeah, I have a little sore throat still. What? You have some? Something? For me? Oh, maybe I don't need. Okay, it's good. It's good. Anything else?